We're back to the Neil Haley Show. I'm excited to welcome a great guest. He's talks education. We're going to talk STEM, and we're going to talk about how he's doing workshops now. Dr. Chris Goldberg. Dr. Chris, how are you? Thanks for stopping by. Great to be here as always, Neil. All right. So let's just jump into this topic. And this topic, you know, can get uh, deeper and, and deeper. The fact is that the book is leading to much, much more. You, again, also are a professor at a university. You're doing so many different things. But this book is expanding things to what you want to do to help teachers, right? The, the book. Uh, addresses just several areas that are so important in in the growth of STEM education and advocating for teachers to help students embrace STEM that may not have before. You know, the book, uh, it's a very inclusive book, but it really promotes um, young ladies in STEM and, and students of color in STEM because they're so underrepresented in the fields. In, in so many ways, and we're so low on uh, candidates to go into the STEM fields that we need more of every gender, but especially since we're so low in the female gender and so low in minorities in STEM, it, it really advocates for that. And it has a role model, Dr. Gladys West, who's so phenomenal, and the lack of role models for young ladies, for people of color, is it research shows and that's a key reason why we're so low in those areas and we need to promote um, these role models for all students and that's such a big area and that's something that i spoke about when i just started did my very first professional development um, at a school district for k-8 teachers and uh, it was a very important point and they were very interested to find statistics and research in that area so your workshop addresses a lot of different things when you're going to go in and do a workshop. Kind of tell the things you address if a school district hires you to come in. Sure. Um, first of all, having resources available right there and opportunities to practice ways to utilize STEM in a classroom situation, in their own classroom for all subjects, because we had teachers uh, special area teachers and we had social studies teachers and science teachers and you know because we know stem isn't just for science and math it's for all subjects because it's inner interconnected for everything so we have opportunities to practice places to get resources opportunities for free websites uh, ways to get materials into your classroom that won't cost a lot of money, that won't take a lot of time to get, which is always such a hindrance. You know, we talked about what are the roadblocks, how can we get past them, how can we get around them, and then some of these key pieces of information that empower teachers to help their students learn and to give the opportunities that we want for all students. And that's a surprise, because even though there's STEM programs in every school, what do you think that missing component is in school districts with STEM? Oh, sure. You, you, a lot of many schools now do, even at the elementary level, have a STEM teacher or maybe a STEM coach. But teachers are scared of taking time away from the, all the things that they have to do. And we've both been teachers um, and the stress of thinking, oh, now I have another thing I have to do. You have to build it into their activities and curriculum so that they feel like, oh, now there's actually a better way to do it. My students will be motivated and it won't take me extra time or the little bit of extra time, maybe in the very beginning will pay off so that eventually I'll have better activities. My students will learn, be more motivated and I might spend less time. That's the key. Right. Spending less time because the strategies are part of the bag of tools that you've learned in your tool shed, right? And your in your sure. toolbox that ultimately the years of that experience really comes back to help new teachers that are so overwhelmed with standards, so overwhelmed in writing lesson plans, so overwhelmed in all those areas. Kind of explain that further. Oh yeah, yeah. I, was, there's no teacher in this country. <laughs> That is not feeling, especially at the end of April, oh boy, what a time of the year. 
it's, there's too much for me to do. I don't have enough training on this. I don't have enough materials. I don't have robots. I don't know how to teach and integrate STEM or other things like this. You know, I'm trained to do this. And, you know, my job is to make it so that, oh, you know, it's really not that difficult. Oh, it really won't cost that much money, even if the school district can't pay for it. Oh, my students will find all the success and I can reach maybe some of the students that really like those hands-on activities. Oh, we can share it and show it off to the rest of the school or to the parents. And I'm going to look good and my students will learn, you know, that, that that's that's what we want for teachers to, to make their job easier. It, it's already hard enough. No doubt. And figuring all those things out. And you have done this working with your college students that are going on into teaching. What experience have they told the going in learning about STEM because you were a professor when they went student teaching and stuff that made it easier to really implement those strategies and make it not even overwhelming as a student teacher? And, you know, because I'm a STEM person and I'm supervising student teachers from both ends as an administrator and a coach. I, uh, you know, I'm always talking about STEM with them and I've given them ideas and resources and ways to do STEM activities. And they, they can't get enough of it to say the least. Um, you know, I've given them maybe a couple, but lent out some materials and what, not once you get them started and they see the success their students have um it's it's like uh almost like a drug they're like oh i'm gonna be doing this all the time it's unbelievable how my reluctant learners were so interested in this they were in charge of their learning and hands-on and they researched it much more than they ever would because it was their project and they wanted to show it off to everybody so I see it all the time, you know, in the inner city in Philadelphia and in the suburbs here in uh, the Philly suburbs. It doesn't matter the level of ability, The dis uh, if there's a disability uh, student with an IEP, um, it becomes an ability instead of a disability, their, their skills. That's what's really phenomenal about it is I've got the special ed background. And so often some of the students that may struggle with reading or writing can do so many more things with these hands-on activities. Totally. Everything they can do in these hands-on activities is very, very important. And school districts, if they wanted to contact you, who like when who would be the, the best way, the best point of contact to go to your website, right? Yeah, Chris Goldberg books.com. They can uh oh boy. I mean, they can contact me on social media. I'm kind of everywhere. You're all <laughs> over the place, man. No doubt. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm kind of everywhere. Um, I've got my stemsational ps at gmail.com with my LLC, the stemsational problem solvers. That's a another way to get a hold of me. And um I'm attending a lot of events that are involved in STEM and in, in Philadelphia and beyond. Uh, I have another one next Saturday at our Arcadia University. So I try to get out there and I'm always learning new things. I I been going to a conference every month at least if not more and talking to teachers so awesome just got to keep learning yeah, that's all it's never stop learning appreciate it dr chris all right great to be here thank you you're welcome you're listening and watching the neil haley show and we'll be back in just a moment